everybody. I hope this video finds you well. For this video, I would like to go over a little bit of uh, the more basic knowledge uh, to address things to do daily for your mental health to be balanced and happy. So it's very nice to have these as little friendly reminders of things to do that you can incorporate in your everyday life that are readily available. So that way you can take those little baby steps and those little daily efforts to make your mental health better and to make your overall well-being a lot happier. So there are 11 suggestions that I have and I'll go over each with a few examples just to serve as a friendly reminder that these can be easily accessible in any day life and incorporated into your daily routine however you see fit and whatever your unique needs may be. So the first one is exercise. Exercise is very important, not only for your physical health, but it actually has proven benefits for your mental health and well-being. While you don't need to achieve it with a specific goal in mind or a specific body image that you want to achieve, um, you can just approach exercise as a way of letting off steam, releasing some stress that has been built up or pent up inside of your body. And you can also understand it as a way to create some really good endorphins that help rewire and reshape your brain and your overall neural pathways. Because if you are constantly taking those active steps to produce more endorphins inside of your brain, it is gonna create a more positive and balanced, happy lifestyle for you. So exercise is very effective. You can find whichever way you would like to. I mean, there's never a one size fits all when it comes to that. It all depends on your needs and your capabilities. So keep that in mind, have fun exploring which form of exercise is best and more enjoyable for you to make you happier. Second one is to socialize. Now, while we all have our different perspectives of friendship or socializing or social events, whether we're introverted or extroverted, um, whatever it may be, just socialize, keep those connections alive. So connect with those that mean a lot to you. So if you're a little bit more of an introverted individual, you can do that by reaching out to your loved ones or people you feel very comfortable with. It's important to keep up that socialization in order to exchange information, to get out a little bit of your own head. It helps a lot to be able to connect with someone else because there is life outside of our head. And it helps a lot for our mental health to step out of that and to be able to connect with another individual. And not only will it benefit you, it'll also benefit the other person to be able to socialize and be able to connect with another individual because by nature we are social animals and whatever we prefer as our social exploration and the way we express our sociality, it depends on the individual, but it is important to keep those connections alive and to be able to reach out to others. Third is gratitude. Gratitude is very good for you um, because it rewires your brain if you start simply thinking about three things you're grateful for each time you awake in the morning. And also think about and reflect upon your day for things that you're grateful for. While it takes a little bit of effort to do because sometimes, you know, life throws its way. There's ups and there's downs with everybody's life and everybody's experience is very unique. I don't know what your situation is, but I'm sure you have had ebbs and flows in your life. But thing is, when you do practice gratitude daily, it can really improve your overall mental state and your overall mental well-being because while you are actively engaging in the things to be grateful for, it trains your brain to actively seek things to be grateful for day in and day out. So more so than focusing on shortcomings or negativity or building up negativities in your head, your brain will be actively seeking for things to be grateful for for that day to reflect upon, to write into your journal. And the best thing you can do is write it in a journal because you keep track of that and you start feeling that with really good things and a lot of things that you're grateful for in your life. And therefore, since you're actively taking that on as a daily task, your daily demeanor and who you are shows up as a very grateful person already before good things happen in life. So think about it this way. I'll use an example. Um, on a regular day, we all know that there are different colors of houses, right? So let's say wherever you're exploring, you're exploring in a neighborhood or you're driving through a certain scenery 
and you start noticing or you give yourself a task to look for oddly colored houses, you know, houses that are outside of the typical range of a color. Then you start noticing which ones are those colors. Or another example, um, let's say you suddenly start noticing trees, a specific tree, pine trees, for example. So then wherever your scenery is, wherever you're going through, you start taking notice of all the pine trees that you see because you're actively looking for pine trees. You've actively assigned your brain to look for pine trees. So if you actively assign your brain to seek things to reflect on in your gratitude journal, then your brain will constantly seek that afterwards. It will show up more, if that makes sense. You'll be able to curate that. And not only will you be focusing your attention on that, you will be creating reasons to feel grateful, if that makes sense. So that's very effective and that's a very, very emphasized thing that I will give to you in this video. Emphasize the gratitude part and try to incorporate it into your daily life. Now, another thing can be spending time outdoors. Number four will be spending time outdoors. It's very good for us to be able to connect with the elements because while we have advanced a lot in technology, we have made things a little bit more readily resourced to us it is important to also connect with something that defies time, technological advances and everything, and that is nature. It's very important because without nature, we don't have the elements that we need to survive. So water, there if there's a fresh body of water in your environment, water is really important for us, right? Sunlight, you need to get those vitamins from the sun because it's very important for your skin and it actually improves your mood to be out in the sunlight for at least 10, 20 minutes a day. Of course, being careful with sunblock and such and making sure your skin doesn't burn or get overexposure to UV rays. But it is important to get that daily dose of the outdoors, that fresh air that comes in because oxygen comes out of plants and out of vegetation and trees. So it's very important for us to get that fresh air amount of oxygen more so than just circulated oxygen from a building or from a home or from wherever it may be it's important for us to get into the root of all of those elements that we need for our well-being number five is meditate meditation is very effective in rewiring your brain and it is amongst one of the few things that can actually change your personality because our personalities don't typically change rapidly our personality only changes with medication, therapy, age, and meditation. Meditation is very effective in being able to do that and being able to change our psychology, our being, you know? So in order to meditate, there are so many benefits about it because, I mean, you, could, you can implement it in your day-to-day -day life easily. You can allow yourself to sit down even for one minute for one minute, just set the timer on your phone, that's 60 seconds, to just sit in silence. And it's important to also emphasize not to assign your brain to think about anything. It's a, it's a chance for your brain to rest from engaging in every single thought it has. So when you meditate, it's very important to just visualize those thoughts or let those thoughts pass like clouds in a clear sky. Let those thoughts just pass through your brain, hence the sky and those thoughts are just those clouds. So meditating helps take you out of your thinking mind and keep you out of that attachment that you are your thoughts or that every thought needs to be taken seriously in your brain and exhausting you and exhausting all your energy and your mental health. So meditation helps you get control by letting go of control, if that makes sense. Number six is to do something nice. Doing a kind gesture can really have a lot of benefits to you because when we do something good, we feel good. And there's some arguments that say that people uh, think that that's a selfish thing to do, but realistically, I think it's good to do that because not only are you improving your mental state or making yourself feel happy by doing something good for another person, um, you can be altruistic and not be doing it for that too, but it benefits two people. In the long run, it benefits the giver and the receiver in providing that really good feeling to it. And it's it's something beautiful to do because when we can do kind gestures for people, 
and especially when it comes to people who need it it is a very beautiful way of interacting and a really beautiful way of stepping out of our heads in order to give to somebody else or in order to give to a cause so that's one to really emphasize number seven is to have a good laugh it's really important to laugh i mean to be light about it you know to be able to step out of that like constrained part of us, the seriousness that we need to be for whatever role life demands out of us, whether it be in the workplace, in a relationship, in an interaction, or just in a professional setting. It's good to be able to step out of that and have a good laugh. So a good way of doing that is to watch some stand-up comedy or to watch something funny, something of a comedy sense. It's really good to do that because it takes you out of that heaviness or that seriousness that you need to be, you know, set in or anything. It lets you be light and lets you create this really overjoyous sense. And laughing releases a lot of endorphins as well. So that's a very good way to step out of it and a really good way to fuel your brain with some positivity in your mental health. And you can incorporate it daily if you like watching comedy a lot or uh, make it a little daily routine so that way if to unwind, maybe you can unwind by watching something funny and getting a good laugh in your day in. Uh, eight is actually to fix your posture, believe it or not. There's a really interesting study that has shown, and it's kind of interesting. You can try this as an exercise, okay? So I want you to fix your posture. I want you to straighten your spine, right? But like really straighten your spine. Put your shoulders back, look up, and smile. Now try to feel sad without changing anything in your physical being. I want you to try it. Like I want you to actually look up and smile and try to feel bad without changing your physical demeanor. It's very hard. So there's also this little feedback loop and a chart that has been conducted by William James and it's specifically linked to questioning whether the emotion is what causes the action or the behavior, or could sometimes that physical action or that physical behavior or that expression of an emotion cause the emotion. So if you wanna feel happy, sometimes you need to fix your posture into a confident stance, into an upright stance, into an uplifting kind of mood, so in order to maybe sometimes feel the emotion that you need to feel, sometimes causing your body to react as if that emotion is already there will cause that emotion to happen. So sitting up straight instead of slouching and looking down and kind of curling in will get you out of that sadness. You know, you're up, you're open, and I mean, you're in a positive kind of position. So it's a little bit easier to release and kind of entice that emotion to come out of you if your physical self is reflecting the way it would be with that emotion. Number nine, get adequate sleep. I also did another video discussing sleep and the importance of it in your mental well-being. So it's very, very, very important to get adequate sleep because your brain needs to kind of rest that amount of time. And you need to be able to set a, a little bit of a routine. You need to try to wake and sleep at the same time. And again, if you want further details about sleep, very, very concise details and specifics, go refer back to that video because it can help improve your state of mental being because you have a routine and sleep is important for your physical health. It helps restore your brain and it helps allow it to rest. And that's very good for your mental well-being because if you don't get adequate sleep, a lot of those negative traits or a lot of those negative mental health disorders can be exasperated when you aren't adequately rested. Number 10 is to have something to look forward to. While it is very important to be in the present and be engaged in the now and be very mindful now and in this moment and not ruminate in the past, but it can also be a little helpful to kind of jump into the future. Not in the sense where you're overthinking or projecting into the future, but to have just little things to look forward to. If it's to be in your incorporation daily, it can be something a little bit less like a goal, but it could be kind of like a reward or a treat 
So give yourself something to look forward to. So at the end of the day, maybe you have a show to look forward to watching or a movie to look forward to watching or a specific meal, a snack or a routine that you do every night, maybe some slippers or a really comfortable rope to wear, or the weekend comes around and you have a very beautiful event planned out, or a special event is coming up. You know, just those little things that you can look forward to. And of course, make sure that it doesn't take you away from your day-to-day -day life. Make sure it doesn't take you away from that moment and affect you in any way or become too distracting, but just to have a little bit of something to look forward to plan a little bit and enthusiastically that helps a lot when you're one to help well-being like for example if you're feeling a little you know if you're feeling a little down or unmotivated you can try to make a plan or have a little thing waiting for you at the end of the day or the end of the week and that's something that can help boost you and motivate you a little bit more in your day-to-day -day life now the last one is to learn something new it's very important for your neuroplasticity to constantly challenge your brain and learn because sometimes our brains cling on to a few old habits and old patterns of being and if you do have an underlying mental health issue or you have a mental disorder or mental illness that needs to be addressed, um, sometimes getting out of that and training your brain to do something else like learning a new topic, learning a new skill, or just overall knowledge about general topics that you wouldn't normally do or read something new can help it a lot in that neuroplasticity in being able to expand your mental being, being able to expand your brain to grasp onto something else because sometimes if you already have an underlying mental illness that you're facing, it gets your brain can get stuck in exerting all its energy and ruminating and tending to that or falling victim to a lot of the symptoms that your mental illness may cause you and distress you with. So if you give yourself something new to learn, something exciting, something that intrigues you, it allows your brain to not be so hyper-focused on your mental illness or on the things that your mental illness brings on into your thought process. And it allows you to be able to create that beautiful bubbly effect in your brain where you're learning something new. And when you learn something new, you also release really good chemicals and rewire your brain a little bit and create neural pathways that can lead to that knowledge. So it won't always be this, that, or the other. You're creating some new neural pathways in your brain. And if you can learn something new that is also a positive thing or a positive adaptation in your life, then that's a win-win. So I hope these 11 things to do daily have been helpful. And I hope that they were specific enough for you to be able to visualize yourself adapting those into your day-to-day -day life. So take, give or take whatever you need from this video, incorporate it into your daily life, and make it a thing. Make it serve in your favor for your mental health and for your brain to be balanced and happy and for your overall life to be balanced and happy. I hope that any of these tips have been helpful or any of the little specifics have been helpful into giving you some sort of ideas to be able to give your life something or your day-to-day -day life a little bit of a task to do in order to kind of just add to your life. I think you deserve that. I think everybody deserves to have a balanced and happy lifestyle. So I hope this helps. If you feel free to share it, go for it. And thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good mental health day.